Gracious Father, as we are privileged to understand, you are a God who has touched our hearts and our souls. You have granted to us a wisdom. You have provided to us your gift of yourself. And we have come here to give you praise. And so we ask that you would bless what we do, that you would bring honor to your name and a true strength to us as we look to you and pray this in Jesus' name. Amen.
Verisile. Be warned, the virgin shall conceive in Verisile, and shall call his name Emmanuel. He is Emmanuel, God with us. God walking on earth is Emmanuel. God joining his people so he could accomplish all that they could not. God becoming man so he could fulfill all promises, pay all debt, free us from our sin, and bind us to himself. He came as a child and brought life to mankind. He is the Christ. His title means Messiah, the Chosen One. His title is distinct, for he is the only Savior, the only Messiah, the only child of God, who would ever come into the world that was truly Son of God and Son of Mary. He is the only Savior, the only Christ child, and the only child who will bring salvation into the world. He is the promised Messiah. God chose the one who would bring life to his people. The Father alone set a plan in motion and brought the Messiah into the world. He was, he was chosen to be the God and man who would give life, his life and substitute for the life of all mankind. He was the only hope for a world lost in sin. Our soul, our heart, and our mind to provide us his words of counsel and wisdom. 
He is perfect in his guidance and counsel, and he alone can lead us away from sin into his grace. He is the mighty God. He is the one whose word is the power of life, creation, and eternity. This child is God who has come into the world to bring mankind the means by which all sinners can be saved and redeemed. God came into our midst to accomplish what we could not and bring us his grace to enable us to be made his own and live with him forever. He is the everlasting Father. He is God incarnate. He came as Lord of all, and his word is the source of life, and he created all things. He came as our God, our Savior, and our Redeemer. He is the one who has prepared a place for us in heaven and provided the path to enable us to arrive there in our death, which he has made life. He is the Prince of Peace, the Son of the Everlasting Father, the Eternal King, who alone, who is honoring his Father, brought peace and unity to the world. The child removed the barrier between man and God and set us apart for him, so we would be holy and worthy of salvation. As the prince, he came to carry out the work he needed to accomplish the will of his father. He brought eternal peace to all his men. King David, 
David and his family grew up in Bethlehem, and David tended the sheep outside the city. Bethlehem means house of bread, to reinforce the reality that the child born there was the bread of life, who offered eternal life to those who lost the He is the son of David. David was promised by God that one of his descendants would sit on the throne as king forever. Mary was a descendant of David. So the child born to her was a son of David. David was a shepherd, and then a king. Only the Lord could be a shepherd of his sheep. And a king that would reign forever. This title proclaimed the truth of God's promise and his will for his people. He is the bread of life. Jesus was the true man that was sent down from heaven to feed his people. He came to bring them life, to sustain their life, and to grant them life which would last forever. He alone could offer himself to us in his own supper through unleavened bread and the word, so he could continue to sustain us in our life here on earth. <laughs> And only left there to pay their taxes. 
It was a town of no great significance, except <coughs> Lord's earthly parents were from there. To fulfill the scriptures, he was called a Nazarene, for he grew up in a town. <laughs>
You could have kept going with the advice. <laughs> Grace, mercy, and peace from God, our Father, and from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. The text is a very short one. Um, it comes from the 31st chapter, I mean, 31st verse of the first chapter of Luke, where the angel says to Mary, and his name shall be called Jesus. He is Jesus. His name means one and only Savior. He is the Son of God. He is the Messiah. He was chosen by the Father to bring life and salvation to his people. He is the promised child whom God brought into the world through Mary. This child is the only Savior the world will ever know, and he is the Savior of us all. Yeshua. Yeshua is the Old Testament, the Hebrew uh, name for Jesus. Jesus is Greek. The name itself was very common. One of the things that Satan led people to do, and it was his normal nature, he had 20 different types of baptisms that were taking place when the Lord's baptism came into being. And one of the most popular names to name your kid at the time of the Lord was Jesus. So his name itself was not unique, except in this context. The Father in Heaven applied something to Jesus that was very unique. It was how he was born. We are told in the scripture that the Holy Spirit came upon Mary, and then the, the power of the Most High overwhelmed her. And when that statement was made that the Holy Spirit and the Most High came over Mary. It's to point us back to creation. Where the Holy Spirit, the Father, and the Son hovered over the face of the deep. And through the power of the Word, through the Son, all life was created. So now in Mary, who was very bright and very attuned to how things went, she said, to the angel Gabriel, how can I be pregnant if I have not been with a man? And it was explained to her that the creating power word and word of God was going to come upon her and life would be given to her and she would be with child. It was to demonstrate the uniqueness of who Jesus was. The Greek always uses articles. We have always said it is Jesus Christ it's how we speak all the time, Jesus Christ. And people actually think both of them are his names, but Christ is a title because it really has an article in front of it. It's Jesus the Christ. Jesus, the only Savior who was chosen by the Father as the Messiah who would save the world. Because his name, Yeshua, in the Hebrew means God is salvation. Joshua in the Old Testament, the name that precluded our Lord Jesus. Joshua one time was fighting a battle for the people of Israel, and he knew that unless he was able to defeat his enemy that day, they would regroup, come back and attack him, and many more people would die. And so Joshua said to the Lord, give me longer time. Give me daylight longer. So God listened to this man named Joshua, who was trying to save his people from being physically destroyed. And he took this world that spins at a thousand miles an hour, and he stopped it. And he kept it stopped with the light of the sun coming right over where they were fighting until Israel defeated their enemy. And then he started the planet up again. And it shows the power of our God. At that time, he used the sun, he stopped, but he used the sunlight to give Israel the right to defeat their enemy. Then he sent his own son into the world that brought his light so that the enemy would be defeated again. It is what the name Jesus points us to. That this is a God of salvation who wants us to understand how incredibly enveloped we are in Him. 
And then when he gave his son the name Jesus, when Mary was told, because Mary was not given an option, the angel Gabriel did come to Mary and say, by the way, I have four options for you, you choose. He said, you shall, it was a command, it was a direct order from God himself through his angel that his name would be Jesus because he was to be great, divine, and far beyond any human being. He was God in our midst. It is why we as Christians understand the wonder of what this day, this season, this whole process is about. Now, I, I asked my confirmation kids to uh, look things up to Google because they have told me that if they don't know how to spell a word, what's the purpose of a dictionary? <laughs> but besides that, we Google Jesus, and the first part of the explanation of Jesus is this. Christians believe that he is the Son of God. The second part explains how you can use it to curse. I'm in the first part. We are in the first part. Because we understand that his name is everything. That the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow, every tongue shall confess that he is Lord in heaven and on earth and under the earth. We hold a name. We have been given the name through this remarkable gift of baptism that is placed upon us that God has promised nothing can ever defeat. So when we reflect to each other that we believe in Jesus, we proclaim the wonder of who he was, who he is, and how every title that he has been given points to the reality that he is God in our midst. It is truly a remarkable gift that God has given to us all. Amen.
But Diana, we ask, gracious Lord, your hand of blessing upon her. We are very thankful for all that you have carried her through, for the joy that you have placed in her heart, for the determination that you have given her, and for the strength that you have placed in her as well. May you continue each day to lift her up, touch her heart with joy, and keep her ever close to you. For the Karshans, Kern and Wade, and Ella. Kern and Wade, we thank you, gracious Father, for the life that you have given them together, for the years that you have enabled them to support and sustain one another. We ask that you would continue to uplift and bless them, granting them your spirit, binding their hearts ever closer, and leading them with your goodness each and every day. For Alan, we, keep, we ask that you would walk with him, continue to open up his mind and heart for all that you desire for him to learn, keep him under your care, and guide him according to your will. The Coffins, for Jesse and Josie, Renee, Isabel, and James. For Jesse and Josie, we thank you, gracious Father, for the life that you have given them together, for the joy that you have enabled them to bring to each other's lives, and the many ways that you have granted to them your wisdom. We ask that you would continue to guide them each day, especially in guiding their own children. So for Renee, Isabel, and James, keep them under your care, walk with them, be near them, and always give them the goodness that comes from you alone. We are privileged this day, dear Lord, to also bring before you Linda. And for Linda, we ask that your hand of blessing would be upon her. We thank you for the strength that you have granted to her. We thank you for the care she has received, and we ask that you would continue to move her forward. For Sue, we rejoice, dear Lord, at the progress that you have granted to her. We ask that you would continue to bless and enrich her, and that each day you would hold her close to you as only you can, and continue to provide her body health. So I place her into your hands and thank you for the remarkable goodness that you have given. For Bob Miller's mom, Wilma, we ask, gracious Lord, that your hand of comfort would be upon her. You understand her situation and all that she is facing, and we are privileged to place her into your hands trusting in you alone when you will allow her to enter into your kingdom and experience the comfort that comes from you alone. So we place her into your hands, we place her life into your hands, and we thank you for the comfort that we can have in placing her there. And as always, dear Lord, we're privileged to turn to you, and we do this day once again in the prayer that your Son has taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. You may be seated.
this. He is the Lord of all. The child of lowly birth. Our everlasting Lord and King. The child who lay in a manger. All of heaven praises his holy name. The child who was hope itself. And came to enlighten the world with his grace. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and grant to you his eternal peace. Amen. Gracious Father, as we come before you, you understand the wondrous life of Wilma and, and her life is in your hands, and we thank you for that. But we ask a special blessing upon Bob and his brother, upon his sisters, and those who are dealing with the loss of their mother. And so this day, we ask that your spirit would be upon them, that you would carry them through this time, providing you comfort and strength in a manner and fashion that we cannot comprehend, but that we trust in. And so we thank you for the gift of life, the gift of your son, the gift of the spirit that you will apply and carry them through this time. That is truly a time when we can rejoice in the gift they receive, but it is so difficult for we to love them. So we look to you this day as we pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you. 